What's going on everybody and welcome back to the crack a pack series today We are opening up a pack of the 2012 core set uh, Yesterday we did open up classic sixth edition So if you did miss that, please go back and check it out. It was a pretty fun pack opening actually I love opening up those old packs, but uh, this is the 2012 core set We do need to keep some things in mind as we go through this one. So first things first we are going to be looking at this as if we were drafting this set as we always do, but it is a core set, which means the power level is not going to be quite as high uh, as we would expect in some other expansions. So as we're going through this, just keep that in mind. If I'm saying this card's a really good card or it's like a decent bomb or something like that, and it's just like an air elemental, it's probably because it's a core set. It's fine if it's not that crazy. It doesn't have to be. Uh, so just keep that in mind as we go through. We are going to go through every card. And our first one here is Skywind Skywinder Drake. Excuse me. Uh, it is a 3-1 for two and a blue, and it has flying. It can only block creatures with flying as well. Um, first things first, uh, the fact that it can only block creatures with flying, not that big of a drawback. Uh, yeah, it does kind of suck. Obviously, you'd love to be able to trade off with anything if you can, but not a huge setback. Uh, the idea here is that you play this on three, and then hopefully you're swinging in for some evasive damage and so i actually don't mind that it can only block creatures with flying i think this is a perfectly reasonable three drop hopefully not our first pick but it could definitely be a decent one uh if we ended up having to go that route or uh we could take pacifism uh so pacifism is one in a white for an enchant creature the en enchanted creature cannot attack or block uh yes i know right off the bat this is not technically like full-on removal but this is as close as you can get in like white. Uh, this is really what white does is the enchantment pacifism effect where it just kind of nullifies it on board. Uh, this is a really, really good card, efficient way of dealing with a huge threat. Uh, and it's because it's only two mana, you can kind of leave it up and decide, you know, threat assessment is always important and you can kind of decide what the, be the, the most oppressive threats on your opponent's side of the field are and tag it to that. Uh, and so it's actually really, really nice. I, one thing to keep in mind with pacifism that it does not do well is deal with creatures with activated abilities. It does not tap the creatures down. It does not nullify the abilities. It just makes it so they cannot attack or block, which is good enough a lot of the time, again, because we're in a core set. But something to keep in mind for sure. It is a strong first pick, though. Would not be happy to pick this, or excuse me, would be happy to pick this up. Uh, fire breathing is one red uh, for an enchant creature as well and you can pay one red and it gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn i don't love this for a lot of reasons one it's the enchant creature thing where you open yourself up for the two for one i talk about that a lot but it's also fairly mana intensive not to play it but just to continuously activate it uh, it does give you a mana sink which is nice but um it, it's a little expensive uh it's nice to be able to boost up that power uh, of any given creature but it does come at the expense of you don't get to play as many things on your actual turn. So th something to keep in mind there. I prefer pacifism over this by far. Uh, and generally speaking, I don't find the, a card like this to be all that great. Uh, Drifting Shade is a 1-1 one, one for 3 and a black. It does have flying and very similarly to fire breathing, you can pay 1 black and it gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of the turn. Uh, I like this more than fire breathing because it's tacked onto the creature already. Uh, and not only that, but it's a flying creature, which is nice. But again, it's kind of the same problem. You get to the point where you're just sinking tons and tons of mana into this, which is fine, but like you're not playing anything else, uh, which means you're going to get into a situation where it's kind of an all or nothing play of either just go all in on the shade or you're never going to activate it uh, because you're trying to play out other stuff. So I find cards like this to not be quite so good uh, unless you know you're going to be able to go the distance with them because, you know, that generally doesn't work out very well. Um, I would definitely take pacifism over the shade here. Uh, Stone, Horde, Stone Horn Dignitary, excuse me, is a 1-4 for 3 and a white. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent skips his or her next combat phase. Uh, certainly a pretty powerful card. Sorry for the voice crack there. Uh, the, the ability to skip your opponent's, uh, combat phase is actually huge because you get to decide when that actually happens. You can choose to play this on turn four or depending on your situation on board, maybe you wait until turn five, maybe even turn six. You could go as long as you want. 
Uh, and so if they play a huge threat, you know they're going to be swinging in with it next turn, and you happen to have this in your hand, it's a really nice ability to just be able to skip that combat phase, and then you get kind of a free turn to, to deal with it. However, pacifism deals with it, and so I'm going to go pacifism over this. Normally I say lean towards the creature, but I do think uh, pacifism is just a very efficient way of dealing with creatures, and so I really do like it here. Uh, I may be a little bit overvaluing it, but I do think it's a fairly strong card, so I think it's a better pick here. Uh, Tormented Soul is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and it can't block and is unblockable. Uh, really interesting card. It just encourages that aggression, so it's like a solid 1-1 one, one, uh, for 1. Um, I really like it. I don't like it more than pacifism. Uh, it is interesting. There are decks that try and just kind of stack a lot of stuff onto Tormenting Soul. Uh, and that can work, uh, certainly. But if your opponent has any piece of removal at all, uh, this tends to be a fairly high priority target just because there's not a great way for them to deal with it on board. Uh, maybe they pacifism it, maybe they do something like that, but that nullifies it completely. So uh, definitely love pacifism more, but I think if you're in black, this is a great turn one play. Absolutely fantastic. It just, it has to be answered at some point. Uh, Amphen Cutthroat is a 2-4 vanilla creature for three and a blue Absolutely do not like this card. Uh, for four mana, you're getting a 2-4 that does absolutely nothing. I think that's very, very bad. Despite this being a core set where, again, power level of cards is not necessarily amazing, this just does absolutely nothing, essentially. Um, it's going to block, but on turn four, they're going to be able to play four fours and things like that. At least you would expect them to. So there's a lot of cases where this just gets outpowered so quickly that it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Uh, Oromancer is a 2-2 for 2 and a white. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you can return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this is actually a pretty useful card, uh, depending on your deck. I would not take this first, but if I found myself taking a lot of enchantments, even cards like Pacifism, uh, I would certainly want to be able to pull those back if they happen to find their way into the graveyard. And so uh, Oromancer just gives you that flexibility, that insurance uh, for a deck like that. And so I actually really like it. It's also not too far off curve. Yes, it's a 2-2 two, two for 3, which is a little high, but that ability certainly offsets it. Um, I'd still take Pacifism over this, but I wouldn't be unhappy actually to wheel this in this pack if I could. <clears throat> Uh, Pride Guardian is a 0-3 for 1 white. Uh, it does have Defender, so it cannot attack, and when it blocks, you gain 3 life. So it kind of has lifelink in a way. Um, I don't love this card. I think it's like just kind of a stall card. I guess there are decks where it's fine. I'm sure there's a life gain deck or something like that where this would love this, but I definitely think Pacifism is a much stronger card. There's no doubt about that. This does not do enough uh, at all, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Hideous Visage, Visage, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, is a sorcery for two and a black. Creatures you control gain Intimidate until the end of the turn. Uh, if you don't know what that is, each of those creatures can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or colors that share a uh, color with it, excuse me. <coughs> uh, and so essentially, it gives you a way to kind of play unblockable stuff for a turn. It's actually a really nice card when you're really wanting to go aggressive, um, if you've got a lot of creatures out on the field and you give them all Intimidate and your opponent just doesn't have a way of blocking any of them, you can straight up win a game off of that card. Uh, I don't think that this is a card that you take very early, though. I think it depends on the deck you're in. I also think this is much more of a sideboard card because you're dependent on what your opponent's playing, what colors they're playing. Uh, and so if they are sharing a color with you, it doesn't really have that big of an impact to play a card like this. So I have a much more sideboard a card like this, but I don't think it's actually bad. I think there are certainly instances where you would play it. Uh, our first uncommon here is Kite Shield. It is a zero mana artifact equipment. Uh, the equipped creature gets plus zero plus three, uh, and you can equip for three of any color. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I don't love this. Yeah, it's okay uh, if you're kind of just looking for extra playables. I think it's fine. But uh, the problem with this is that it doesn't give a boost to power. It's only to toughness. Yeah, that means your creature's going to stick around, but that doesn't aid it in dealing more damage. And so it's not necessarily forwarding your game plan as much as just stalling the board. Um, 
I do like that it is an equipment, uh, which makes me want to play it much more over an enchant creature, but uh, definitely not, I don't think, the pick here. I don't think it's strong enough at all. Uh, Master Thief is a 2-2 two -two for 2 and 2 blue. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, gain control of target artifact for as long as you control Master Thief. Uh, this can be a very strong card, but you, again, you're very dependent on what the opponent's playing. If they're not playing any artifacts or very few artifacts, or their only artifact is Kite Shield, excuse me, um, this isn't a very good card. It's not going to do enough to value it uh, very highly. Uh, and so while I think this is a good card to have access to if you're in blue, I don't think it's the pick here again. Uh, it just does not do enough on its own. It's not a very aggressive card. It's truly just one to, to gain value from stealing that artifact. If you don't have a target, it's not going to be worth it. Uh, Tectonic Rift is three and a red for a sorcery. Destroy target land. Creatures without flying can't block this turn. Uh, very important here is the creatures can't block. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I don't mean to keep coughing. Um, that really is the, the crucial thing here. It's great to blow up a land. Uh, certainly, you'll find some value in that, just setting your opponent back a turn. Or if you find that they have a utility land, it's great to blow it up as well. But uh, not being able to block just means that your creatures are going to be hopefully able to deal a good bit of damage on the turn you play this. Uh, and so what I find is if you find yourself in like a red, uh, maybe a red black or a red white aggro deck where you're really focused on just flooding the board with a lot of little dudes and swinging in like crazy. This is actually a pretty good card uh, solely because it keeps their their creatures from being able to block you as long as they're ground creatures. And so you're able to actually do a lot of damage usually on the turn that you play this. I'd rather be solidified in that deck first. Uh, this is not a card that I would necessarily first pick by any means, but I think it's really good in that deck. So if I find myself there, I would definitely take it. Uh, and then our rare is Gideon's Avenger. Uh, so it is one and two white for a two, two. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, you do put a one, one counter on Gideon's Avenger. So gotta be honest, this definitely beats out pacifism in my mind. <coughs> it's a, it's a two, two for three on the onset, but your opponent's creatures are probably going to be tapped at some point. And so this is just going to hopefully bolster this as much as possible. Uh, and eventually it will outpower some stuff. I don't think this is an amazing, like crazy bomb by any means, because there is a good bit of time for your opponent to deal with it uh, be before it becomes like a, a game ending threat. But it can become a game ending threat. And I think that that means that that's enough in this set, I think, to make it worth first picking. Uh, it's just such a solid card. Anytime you're doing, you're playing a creature that has a solid effect in a core set, especially, it's probably not a bad thing. Uh, you're you're going to be able to get some value off of it, even if that just means they're having to spend a removal spell on it. Uh, think about it this way: you're only investing three mana into this. The rest of it is up to the opponent. Either they're going to tap creatures and start attacking in or using abilities, which is going to bolster this up like crazy. Or they're going to have to spend a removal spell like Pacifism or Murder or something like that. I, I don't actually know if Murder's in this set, i got to be honest. But uh, some kind of removal spell to actually deal with it. In which case, you only invested three mana. Um, yeah, that's, you know, something for sure. But they're spending a full-on removal spell on a three mana spell. That's not great for them. Uh, and so I actually like this. I think it's just a really, really solid pick. Uh, I don't believe we got a foil, no. But... Uh, definitely, I think my pick is Gideon's Avenger. Pacifism, also good. The rest of the pack, not so great. Uh, didn't love this one, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.